A last-minute effort to prevent a nationwide strike may have failed after organized labor comprising the Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress on Friday boycotted an emergency meeting with the federal government which was scheduled for 3 p.m. at the presidential villa in Abuja. The federal government had called the emergency meeting with the leaders of the organized labor to see if it could convince the labor movement not to go ahead with its planned strike on Tuesday, October 3. The organized labor is protesting the cost of living crisis following the removal of petrol subsidy by President Bola Tinubu on his first day at work. To make the impact total, the labor unions directed all state chapters and affiliates to shut down critical facilities and infrastructure, including airports, seaports, electricity grids, and fuel supply nationwide, until government is ready to meaningfully engage with them. Meanwhile, President Tinubu is expected to address the workers' demands in his Independence Day speech on October 1, hoping to talk them out of the planned strike, even as the government mulls a minimum wage increase. Already, more than 20 unions have issued strike notices to their members to join the nationwide strike. The federal government, through the Attorney General of the Federation, is however asking the NLC and TUC to shelve their planned nationwide action arguing that the action will amount to a gross violation of a subsisting court injunction and that such an action may amount to a contempt of court. To help us make sense of the deadlock between organized labor and the federal government, we have joining us in the studio, the head of information and public affairs of the Nigeria Labor Congress, Comrade Benson Upa. Thank you so much, Comrade, for joining us. My pleasure, Sambo. Yes, so speak to us. What's the state of things right now? Are you still set for your nationwide strike or the government is reaching out through the back channels uh, to see how the strike can finally be averted, uh, considering that we've also heard the government saying that on October 1st, uh, the federal government through President uh, Bola Tinubu will be making uh, some announcements that may actually assuage your feelings. Well, Sambo, to the best of my knowledge, nothing has changed. We are ready um, for our strike action. And except uh, Mr. President summons the requisite political will and the empathy for the people. Because the people are suffering, people are dying in droves. Except he must have enough empathy for these people plus political will to do the needful. And uh, in any case, you will have to agree with me that organized labor, organized labor has never been this patient. Yes, it's, uh, this, is, this has been from June 5th to death, and we've been fucking no action, nothing. You've also been threatening the government with protests, from protests to uh, <laughs> Warning I, I, strikes I, I, I would, and all I, of that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that a uh, threat. I know, we do, I know we did issue a notice of our strike action. And uh, when government said, no, come let us talk. We shelved it and went and talked. We, I mean, we mutually agreed on uh, seven items. Nothing happened, okay? We mutually signed those resolutions. Nothing happened. And then we said, okay. You think so? Because the Minister of Labor says uh, one of the conditions that you give to him, the release of the uh, officials of the, quote, factional National Union of Road Transport Workers uh, has been reached. I mean, he has asked the police to release them. And so that's the first win. Well, first and foremost, when this process started, we had no issue in the union, in the union of uh, the National Union of Road Transport Workers. We didn't have that, okay? And then two, we do not have factional leaders there. We have duly elected leaders, okay? And, uh, well, I was quoting the Labour Minister, yes, actually. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I think, uh, I think he actually spoke in error there, with all due respect to him. Okay, so can anything still be done within the next 48 hours? I mean, there's a window between now and Sunday, uh, Sunday to Monday before the eventual strike 
on Tuesday. Is there anything that this government can actually do? Because it looks like labor, unlike the other previous warning strikes and, uh, of course, the protests, it looks like uh, labor seems to be coordinated, organized, and uh, united this time around to actually go ahead. Well, actually, to tell you the truth, we were not disunited. We had and still have a common mission, common purpose. Uh, it was uh, the way and means to achieving that objective that slightly differed. If not, we we'll have been on the same uh, on the same page. We attended the same meetings together, sat together, signed the same documents together, and also had our uh, interunion meetings together. So uh, nothing really uh, put us asunder. And as I speak with you, we have been in continuous meeting. NLC and TUC. So, but as I said earlier on, we have been most fair, most considerate. Uh, what has happened clearly shows that government did not plan before it made this, it took the decisions that it took that have taken the nation by, by storm. So, uh, government's reaction time, in my view, is rather sluggish, you know, Government by now ought to have put, put its act together. Uh, how many times have we met? How many times, oh, we're going to do ABC, we're going to do that, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Nothing has happened. So, and you know, Nigerians, the pains are deepening. Sambo, well, I, I chuckle each time I hear people say that Mr. President hit the ground running. And I ask those people, running to where? <laughs> you see, what we have had by the combination of two policies, the devaluation, the mindless devaluation of the Naira, and the removal of subsidy, what they have caused this nation uh, pain, paralysis, trauma, and confusion. The final one, fear. There are few Nigerians that are not afraid today. There is fear in the land. And uh, so once you have a combination of this, so, so that is what we've got. And informants. So the question on the lips of the average Nigerian, even the politicians outside the microphone, they do admit, yes, I say, where are we? So it is important. Including members of the governing all progressive congress? Sure. It's not every one of them who has access to the till. Only a few privileged ones have <laughs> access to the till. <laughs> okay. Oh, so yes. there's hunger in the land. There is hunger in the, in the land. There, there's not only hunger, there's fear in the land. Okay, yes. so now the Attorney General of the Federation, who is the uh, chief. Uh, lawyer of the Federation uh, is saying that you will be violating the law on October 3 when you decide or if you decide to go on that strike. And he says because there was a subsisting order by the National Industrial Court and they had even uh, gone to court to actually, uh, you know, ask for contempt proceedings against NLC. But this same NLC had to go around putting fear in government and urging government to withdraw that court case or else they will paralyze all sorts of things. And that the National Assembly intervened, also other well-meaning Nigerians intervened, and it withdrew that contempt of court proceedings. But if you go ahead with that strike, and I want to quote him now, he says, it is also to be recalled that based on the conduct of the said nationwide action and protest, this office, that's the AGF office, instituted contempt proceedings against the labor leaders. However, upon the intervention of the President and National Assembly, coupled with the decision of the labor unions to discontinue the action and protest, the contempt proceedings were not prosecuted further. Uh, this was advisedly done to enable the government and labor unions to engage in further negotiations without any form of encumbrances. And he goes on to say, if you go on strike on Tuesday, whatever happens to you, you will have yourselves to blame as both NLC and TUC. Talk to us about that. Well, the Attorney General of the Federation, as you appropriately said, is the Chief Law Officer. 
and is a very powerful person or personality and his views should be taken seriously. However, with all due respect to him, Sambo, the Attorney General knows very well that um, a restraining order cannot be equated to a perpetual injunction. That is one thing. Two, the government issued a statement, the agency of, of issued a statement saying that due to the non-diligent prosecution of that order, that, that the order lapsed, that is two, three, in all fairness, do you know whatever the office of the AG or the Solicitor General, whatever it was at that time, whatever they did, whatever, whatever had happened, the court didn't sit to take our response to that, to that order. So what the AG is trying to do is litigious or judicial terrorism. And it's not going to work. This country didn't get to where it is today by people falling back on their knees because, uh, they, they, because the Attorney General said, if you do this, I'm going to do this to you. Let him be prepared to put all of us in, I mean, in jail. Because he knows very well that he's the one running contempt of the law because what he's trying to do is wrong. He's, he's doing a wrongful interpretation of the law. A, a restraining order has, can never be a perpetual injunction. You think a senior and advocate of Nigeria and the person of Latif Fagbemi... You can't scare me with that, Sambo. Sambo, Sambo. <laughs> let me tell you this. Look, let me tell you this. You can't scare me with that, okay? I've told... Let, I bring him here. If he thinks... If he thinks... Or if you believe what I have said is not true, consult... Uh, Competent lawyers. They tell well, let me quote him. Yes. He says, the proposed strike is a clear violation of the pending interim injunctive order granted on June 5, 2023, restraining both the Nigeria Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress from embarking on any industrial action or strike of any nature. Pending the hearing and determination of the pending motion on notice, we wish to reiterate that a court order regardless of the opinion of any party on it, remains binding and enforceable until it is set aside. I responded comprehensively to this issue. And if you insist, I will repeat what Adela said. Yes, I saw your statement. Yes, and and that's you, why I brought you, you I mean, here. I mean, you saw, I mean, you saw a statement and also said that the court didn't even sit. And that in any case, a restraining order, let me repeat, cannot be a perpetual injunction. And let me tell you, we are acting in pursuance of our rights as enshrined in the Constitution. The right to peaceful protest, the right to uh, peaceful assembly, the right to peaceful speech. That on the general, his powers do not extend to gagging us, and he knows he can't gag us. He should also remember when he was on the side of this, of, I mean, of, 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 of the popular struggle. Yeah, I mean, people yeah, should not forget that. government is different. Pe 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 people I mean, should I not forget. Like I mean, and, they and, have and, even and, represented and, and, at some point. In and fact, all of even that. Mr. President himself, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's a product of, of popular struggle. So, I mean, this we cannot The being in government is a different thing. You know, we'll that remind like them. always said that no, a Sam, friend in government is a friend lost. Uh, um, oh, yes, my brother keeps <laughs> saying so. But Samuel, let me tell you, we will keep reminding them. One, of their obligatory duty to the citizenry. They apply for this job. Do you understand? They knew what the job entailed before they apply for the job. Now they have gotten the job. They have to do the job. Part of the mandate of that job is that you should not come and complain. Anybody who comes and complains, oh, the reason I'm unable to do this is because of ABC. No, 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 no. You have to come with a clear vision. Well, Tunubu has said that uh, he is not going to complain because he knew what he was applying for. Oh, great. And oh, so great. I love that part of his speech. It. I <laughs> guess maybe that's the reason why he, re he returned very quickly ahead of uh, uh, the protest so that he'll be able to see if he can, you know, uh, do something fine, and, fine. and reach out, I mean, to you. But I want to stress what the Attorney General is saying. It looks yes. like uh, 
Comrade uh, Benson, you, you don't scared? know how serious the Attorney General is taking this issue because he wrote to your lawyer, uh, Femi Falanos, stating clearly, and he said that the strike, the proposed strike action is in gross breach of the subsisting court order as well as the appropriateness of addressing their grievances uh, and demands within the ambient of the law. Uh, Hence, the need for them to be more accommodating and show greater appreciation of the effect of the order of the court by shelving the strike action. We have been, Are you shelving the strike we, action? We, you're let, still going Sambo, ahead? Sambo, we have been most accommodating. And um, at least in two fora, uh, I've had the opportunity of defending organized labor. Organized labor was accused frontally of taking sides with APC that PDP government didn't enjoy this privilege under Jonathan. Do you understand? I said this um, during the um, Abuja MBA uh, National week. Conference. No, no, the, the week. I mean, the Abuja oh, okay. MBA, something, week. MBA, okay. MBA week. I'd, because I remember a lawyer standing up and asking that question. And I tried to explain the difference between what happened in, in President Jonathan's time and what happened now. And there was this, uh, the governor's forum. I told, I said, look, this is the accusation that we're facing. And beyond those accusations, Sambo, we have become the butt of jokes from Nigerians. <laughs> of course, I was about coming to that. You getting me? What I so, did, so, Nigerians so, will join so, you in this if, if because I, they say NLC and, 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 and if I let me tell you, some even say that they bought us houses uh, in Dubai, London, and I say, well, Sambo, at my age, I'm not too young to own a house in Dubai. <laughs> if, and the, the guys who own houses in Dubai... But that wouldn't make you a comrade again if you own a house wait, in wait, wait, Dubai. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there you go wrong again. Comradeship is not about uh, penury of poverty. Mm. It's about equitable redistribution of na national wealth. I thought being a comrade means being a Marxist, actually. No, no listen. Uh, living a Marxist sort of Karl life. Marx, Karl Marx... I mean, the, I mean, the spiritual, uh, okay, I mean, I mean, the man from whom the, I mean, the, I mean, the term or concept Maxim came from. He was an intellectual. You understand? Marx, Marx and Engels were not poor people. Lenin was it poor. In fact, Lenin was a lawyer. Do you understand? So when we, I mean, when we choose to propagate the, I mean, the, I mean, the ideas of these great men of history. It is not to deepen poverty. I want Nigerians, I want, I want you to understand, I mean, to, I mean, me to understand this clearly. It is to ensure that there is equitable distribution of wealth or redistribution of wealth so that we are equally rich or at least, I mean, there is a certain relative parity, okay, of prosperity. Not that a select few will be so rich to the exclusion of the majority of others. So I, so now, so some people come into this issue specifically. So when people are saying, oh, they bought you guys houses in Dubai and in London, I say, I say am I too young to own a house in, in Dubai? <laughs> I ask this question, am I this, by, my, by my age, by my education, by my experience, by all of that. I say, I'm not too young to, and that ended, the, I mean, the whole joke. But that also goes to show you, Sambo, that even the patience of Nigerians has run out. Do you understand? Because even as they resort to, to, I mean, to those crass jokes, there has been no alternative to NLC. That's, yeah, I mean, that's why I mean, you understand are saying me? that I mean, NLC is I mean, a wedge. I mean, I, mean, I mean, they go and they still come back. Yeah. And also, I must tell you this, Samuel. You know, the good thing about us is that we know when to start and we know when to stop. We have been acting as some kind of wage between the rage of Nigerians. If we choose to fold our hands, that rage will find its expression. Do you understand? And that will be hugely dangerous. Well, so sorry. let government listen to us. Let, <laughs> let it. <laughs> well, we all hope uh, uh, both sides reach a compromise because a total shutdown of the country means nothing goes in and nothing comes out. And of course, you and I know the impact on the economy. But as we try to round off this conversation, talk to us again. What exactly are you looking for? What are the five top demands, for example, that the NLC is asking for? Because everybody had agreed that the removal of petrol subsidy was the right decision. All the presidential candidates said so. Uh, so people are confused. Uh, Sambo, what exactly Sambo, is the NLC Sambo, asking Sambo, for? Will, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the first part of your question last. That subsidy has been removed. 
So has, has the subsidy removal in the manner Mr. President has done, has this solved the problem? Well, I mean, there are lots so, of... In fact, in fact, let me tell you, at the <laughs> moment, the, the, I mean, the Naira to, uh, to the dollar is uh, 1,000. And, uh, and there are hmm, 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 talk somewhere that subsidy is back. Yeah, I mean, that's why. I mean, lots of people <laughs> so, are saying so, that. So, so, what the APC so, government is doing so, is simply voodoo economics because good. a lot so, of people so, don't know what's so, happening. So, so, if they have told us so, that so, the market forces are <laughs> determining uh, so, the price of petrol, how come when the crude oil price is going forward, the prices of so, petrol in Nigeria still remain so, uh, so, the so, same? So, from, what's going on? From day one, we said, we told the government, your your solution is not the appropriate one. Your solution is subject to two things. Or your solution is bound to change each time there is volatility in the crude oil market. It's bound to change, your equations will change each time there is a change in the exchange rate between the Naira and the dollar. Very quickly, so, try to run so, so that is dangerous. So we said, look for First of all, we say deal with the criminal content. If you deal with that cabal, which, which Mr. President was gracious enough, he was, yes, I mean, he was gracious and courageous enough to admit in his speech, in his address, that there is a very strong cabal. But instead of dealing with that cabal, he chose to deal with us, I mean, the weaklings. So had he chosen to deal with that cabal? That's a corruption. I mean, that corruption, subsidy. yes. I mean, the guys who bring this in, who, I mean, who, I mean, who do who do over-invoicing, all the crooked in seaside, whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's what so, Far so, Farouk Perugi so, so, was saying so, today so, in his piece, that so, it's actually not the, so, the oil so, subsidy is not the problem, it's the corruption in Yes, it. he should deal with it. Once, once he does that, yeah, it will be clear. Because let me tell you, even the United States is subsidizing uh, consumption of uh, fuel for these citizens. In fact, the last time I told you, he had $10, 10 billion. It has since gone up. At the moment, I mean, the Western countries, Germany and the rest, they're doing tier subsidy, two tier subsidy. Yeah, I so, mean, um, so, so, you get it, it's so, been so, very controversial, so, actually, so, whether so, the U.S. government is actually doing I'm the subsidy. Quote, I'm, yeah, I'm, I mean, I've, I've done some research so, about so, it, actually, so, and I so, saw that so, so, there's a subtle way to reduce so, so, challenges. I mean, I, mean, so, I mean, so the issue is that um, once the government, as you say, deal with the corruption in it, the inherent corruption in it, make our refineries, local refineries, to work, create an enabling environment for private sector participation. Let them build modular refineries. How long will it take to build a modular I mean, refinery? Well, NMPC so, is not supplying so, so, them fuel. So, let mean, me tell I, you something. I mean crude. LM is not giving them crude. Deal with that situation. Mm. Because, you know, I, I mean, they keep on telling us, I mean, that fuel is so cheap. I mean, somebody, I mean, they keep on t telling, us, uh, telling us that fuel is very cheap in Nigeria. They don't ever talk about the capacity of the Nigerian. Our capacity is the least amongst the uh, OPEC countries, even among, even, even among the OPEC plus countries, okay? So if you want us to pay more for fuel, increase our capacity. At the moment, the national, I mean, the, the, I mean, the, I mean, the minimum wage is 30,000. How many, how many people are paying? Yeah, and, and that's where and, I wanted and, and, and to in ask case, you, lastly, and, before and, I and, get to and, and, and in those countries where they say fuel subsidy costs us or something, they, I mean, their national minimum wage is 1.5 million naira up. <laughs> well, so, so <laughs> that, that's the money of so, some so, so, executives, so, including the president himself so, in Nigeria. So, I mean, so what's anybody saying? Oh. So, Sambo, our, our position has been very clear. I mean, the, uh, Mr. President should do the needful. And let us become friends again. Okay. Uh, very quickly, yes. in 30 seconds. Yes. If the president announces a new minimum wage for the NLC uh, in his nationwide address on Sunday, the 1st of October, <laughs> marking Nigeria's 63rd anniversary, independence anniversary, in the spirit of give and take, will the NLC, I mean, uh, see this as a comforting position for it to be able to drop the na strike a new national minimum wage is not the solution. One of, the, one of the low hanging fruits that Mr. President has to pluck is to give a wage award. What do you mean by what? A by wage that? award is if a policy causes a major socioeconomic displacement, like we have experienced, that has made it possible for people unable to go to work, to feed, to live in rent or something, you suddenly you make a sudden injection of uh, capital or resources into their earnings. It lifts them, okay, and they pick up from there. 
uh, let me tell you this. When Obama very uh, quickly, yes, yeah. When Obama came in, Obama came in, 2007-2008 or so, something like that you know. 2008. Going yeah, the U.S. was in recession. What did he do? Obama incentivized big business, gave them money, and raised wages. So the two of them uh, formed a synergy. And the, uh, the U.S. economy had a bullish run up to the time of Mr. Trump. So all we're saying is one of the low-hanging fruits of Mr. President is to do a wage award, first and foremost. All the, right, I mean, the minimum wage is another answered property. that question. If there is a... Uh, minimum wage announcement by Mr. President, said, well, maybe to sixty thousand. I answered. I answered your you answer you point. To call off his strike. I answered you yes pointedly. No. I answered you pointedly. Yes or no? Actually, I already answered you. Sample. Well, <laughs> Sample. Sample. You answer, answered in a long mm -hmm. period. Yes or no? No. Well, I, you, you know, but you didn't ask me a, a yes or no question. Okay, I'm asking you now. Will that actually actually assuage the feelings of NLC very quickly? No, I didn't quite hear you. If the president increases the national minimum wage, say, for example, doubling it to 60,000 naira, would the NLC call off its proposed strike on Tuesday? Is he going to do so? Are you, are you preempting Mr. Yes President? Or no. Are you preempting <laughs> Mr. President's speech? All right. It seems you don't want to answer it. And I understand the reasons why you don't want to. But I must thank you so much, thank Comrade Ben Opa, for helping us to understand uh, the inner workings of the NLC and the thinking behind the strike uh, which has been proposed for uh, Tuesday, October, October 3, and we just hope that uh, in the next 48 uh, a hours, lot can a lot can a happen. A lot can yes. happen. And please, yes. we we'll ask you to reconsider anything that's brought before you. Uh, we must thank you so much, uh, Comrade uh, Ben Rupa is uh, the national, uh, the head of uh, media and public affairs in the Nigerian Labour Congress. Uh, the lead labor center in the country and of course uh, the NLC and the TUC and other labor center have called for a strike on Tuesday. We're all waiting to see if indeed something can be done very quickly to prevent a shutdown of the economy.